Okay, I apologize for a video that was up for a short period of time. Uh, found out that half of it, uh, the sound was missing. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Uh, so I apologize. Some of you were very kind to, to let me know. And also um, your comments. They've So the video was deleted. And then um, I actually de deleted the video. Um, and so I'm going to redo it now. Um, and, and your comments were gone as well. So I apologize, okay? It's just, I, I don't know. It's just what happens to me sometimes. So we'll try it again. So we've been talking about the marriage, the, a Jewish wedding, um, all the things that precede, precede it, and then the wedding and the feast and everything, and then how it ties into um, the parable of the 10 virgins, how, how it connected the apostles of Jesus Christ, how they knew. And, and, and then in particular, the, the, the uniqueness of a Galilean wedding, which had, had just a few other little things, you know, that, that made it unique. And then it, it was also tied into the Last Supper. And it was very powerful. Now, um, five years ago, 10 years ago, if I would have seen this, this is just me personally, I probably would have gone, well, that's interesting, but, you know, so what? There is such an awakening right now, and, and I want to talk a little bit about that. Before I do, I want to, I want to mention how um, I came to know a little bit about the wedding, and it was with a video I watched of Jody Stoddard. Jody Stoddard, and I bet it was a year ago, probably right now or close to it. Um, and I'll never forget it. I was, I was actually out in Manila, Utah, right there on the Wyoming uh, border by Flaming Gorge. And I had some time and I was just looking at my phone and I'd, I had watched part of her video and I was watching this and I was just like, dang, this is amazing. And so I watched it. Um, and then I read some of the comments, and some of the comments were just downright mean. I'll be honest with you. Most of them were pretty good, but some were mean. And, and I thought, hmm, that's not right. Um, I made a comment and said, this is the greatest. I just love this stuff, you know. And I, I had started my channel a, a year ago in December, so I've been doing it over a, a year. So, you know, it, it was it, this was kind of new to me, and... Um, Anyway, shout out to her. I don't know what she's up to these days, but those were some amazing videos. And, and so she was, for me, she was at the forefront of all this. And now other things have been added for, for me. Someone recommended that three-part series. I just finished the first part today, uh, and I put the link up in my last video of those that three parts. Fascinating. It's so interesting. Um, okay, there's, there's others. Uh, that that I've uh, watched um, last dispensation Troy Abels I love that guy I love his presentations I love his voice his voice is so good um, but but he's a good kind soul and he has the spirit with him and he ties in um, uh, the way I look at it is he, he he's really good at tying in um, um, ancient prophecy with modern revelation and just an an awesome guy. I think there's one um, called um, uh, Millennial Rain, maybe. Um, so good, so good. There's people that do um, timelines and, and all that. I love them. I, I'm not a timeline person. I don't have anything against them. I just don't, my brain doesn't work that way. But I love that people are trying to put all the pieces together. Uh, two LDS archive, uh, Micah puts out some amazing stuff and does a lot of work. I don't watch a ton of his because some of them are kind of long <laughs> and I just, you know, I'm trying to do my own studies and whatnot. But um, I've had, you know, and I, it's not like I agree with everything, but but the things I disagree are so little minor and and and, and every one of them have, have adds to it. Then, then you combine that with all of the um, Come Follow Me presentations. Oh my goodness. And I know I've said some things about some of the come follow me. That's no big deal. It, the, you know, this, this much we agree on, this much we, we I, I might have a little difference. So what? Big deal. They're good people putting out awesome information. 
and, and here, this is, this is what I want to talk about today, that this is not by mistake, and this isn't by chance, and it's just not a few of us people that, that because of, of the, the virus, you know, we're, we're, we all just started doing this kind of thing. I, that had to play in it, but, but really, there's an awakening. There is an awakening. And, and the thought came to me, I was thinking of the parable of the wheat and the tares, the wheat and the tares. And I think it's in Matthew 13, I believe. And a man plants a, a field of wheat. And the, the, the Lord asks him, you know, this is, this is fine, but what else is in there? There's some tares in there, tares, weeds, bad stuff that takes the nutrients, crowds out the good stuff, the wheat, and, uh, and, 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 the, 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 the man says, my enemy did this at night. Obviously, I'm paraphrasing here. Um, and, and so should we, should we go out there and tear out the, 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 the tears? Um, pull them out. And the Lord says, no, we're going to let them grow together. We're going to let them grow together because if you pull those tender plants up now, it'll affect the wheat as well. Uh, so, so we're just going to let it go. But then there's gonna come a time of harvest, and that's when we'll take care of business. And, and it's interesting, in the Joseph Smith version of that, um, well, I'll, I'll say this, in the Matthew version, it's the, it's the tares are first, and then the wheat. But in the Joseph Smith version, it is the wheat that's harvested and separated before the tares. Now, this is kind of interesting to me because it could be, it's just, it's just a possibility that this could be a rapture scripture where the good, the good planting, of this plant, this, this, this grain that sustains life, and um, there's so many cool things about it. Um, and we'll talk about the difference between um, the wheat and the tares and then the chaff of the wheat um, and the threshing floor. We'll, we'll cover that again later. But, but, um, with, with the idea that Joseph Smith in, in the inspired version said that the wheat was gathered first. It's kind of interesting. It could just be the gathering, you know, but it also could be the harvesting and, and raising up and preserving and securing a, a righteous people. Okay, so here's the thought I had on this that, that combines with this... Um, um, this, this, the spirit of enlightenment that I think we're, we're going through right now is that, um, now I'm not a farmer, but I've, I've farmed, uh, I've worked on farms. Okay. And then the wheat, when it's coming up, it's beautiful. It's green. It's not this amber wave of grain, right? It's green. And as it's coming up from a distance, it's just beautiful. It looks perfect. But the closer you get, the more you see that there are some problems weeds and whatnot. So if you're looking at a timeline, and this is the second coming, or the major, major events preceding the second coming, and, and here we were a while back, and as we get closer, we start to identify the wheat from the tares. Back here, we can't really see it. I think that's what's going on right now. I think we are really awakening to what's really right and wrong, what's good and evil, what's, what's real and what's fake. Um, who's a good person and who's not such a good person, you know? I mean, and, and, and so I think that's what's attracting us to these, these channels, the scriptures that we're reading and all the things that are going on because I really do believe that, well, I'll say this, I, in the past for me, my experience was, is that uh, when I was young, it was that the old guys were the ones that thought about all this kind of stuff. They had the time and you know, you just look at them like, yeah, I'm raising kids, I have a job and I don't really have time for this, uh, but you know, go for it. I don't think it's that way anymore. I, I think there, there are old people like me, but there, there's young people that are really just like, bam, getting it. And I think, I don't think that was that way, maybe a few exceptions, but, but now it, there's, there's large groups of young people that are really understanding what's going on. 
So um, as, we, as we get closer to the second coming, more and more defined definition of, of what's good and bad. And it works both ways. So, so someone who was a neighbor, say, and you knew they weren't members of the church, you might just kind of like, eh, hi, you know, kind of thing and avoid them. Now you're going, that's a good person. They're good people. I'm going to align myself with them. I'm going to, I'm going to get closer to them. And, and then there might be other people that you're like, Ooh, you know, but, but the positive aspect of it is wonderful. And so this is what's happened with us. I was probably more, way more hesitant, not that many years ago, to listen to a preacher from another faith or to um, listen to um, uh, a guy that's converted from, from Judaism to Christianity and have his, listen to his insights. Well, what does that have to do with me? I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So that's changed for me now. If they're pointing me towards Christ or if they have some another little piece of the puzzle, <clears throat> I'm all in. I want to hear it. I want to, I want to devour it. Along with what what we have, right? And 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 it's just amazing. And and how many times have we just went, oh, I wish they'd listen to what we have too, you know? Wish they had the I wish they would embrace the Book of Mormon. I can't tell you how many of these guys I have written to. And if I found their email, I email it. Otherwise, I comment on their, their channel. And some of you maybe have seen it. But I just beg them to just give the Book of Mormon a chance. I say, it's about, it's about a Jewish family. It's all, about, it's all about the Jews. It talks about Jerusalem and, and the Jews. It's about a family at 600 BC leaves Jerusalem because the, the, the guy is prompted by the Spirit that it's going to get that Jerusalem's going to get destroyed and he leaves and I and I I said if you want I'll I'll hand deliver you a copy I'll fly to Jerusalem and give it to you you know well now I couldn't because of the whatever but uh, you know I've done that and I would do that so it, but in any event we're sharing and we're we're learning and everything is 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 coming together now as we do this let's Let's open our minds a little bit. I was in. I was reading in um, uh, Second Nephi chapter twelve. I told you I, before I was reading the Book of Mormon again. I always like to be reading it. I'm taking it very s slow, and and this is this is uh, Second Nephi twelve is compared to Isaiah two. Isaiah two, and and the 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 scriptures are really interesting. I'm gonna. Um, this, this one in particular, I'm going to start in verse 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days when the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the tops of the mountain, in the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. Now, if, if I asked you what that scripture was referring to, most of you would say, and I would agree, Salt Lake and the, the Salt Lake Temple. There's, there's so much. If you want to Google or DuckDuckGo, just put mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and then do a space and put LDS. It'll take you to the church website and you can see, boom, all of it. I wouldn't use the church website search. Um, it's not very good. No offense. Um, but um, let's continue reading. And many people shall go and say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and he will walk, and we will walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Now that has been um, taught that the, the, for out of Zion shall go forth the law is the new Jerusalem. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem is, is, is the Jerusalem, right? So um, that's really interesting um, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, one is, is that Zion is the mountain of the Lord, which is Salt Lake, which is the Salt Lake Temple. Now, um, if you read verse 1, it, it, it throws a little twist in there for me. 
the word of the word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. So, so here we have this this mirror. We have this is really a prophecy about Jerusalem, but it's also about Salt Lake and the Salt Lake Temple and the Mountain of the Lord here. And and it's it's like we have <laughs> I've said this before. We have the Great Salt Lake and we have the Dead Sea. We have the Jordan River and we have the River Jordan, right? And 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 Isaiah is seeing this, and and so what what is happening to Jerusalem, and Judah? So it's a people, and a city. So we have Salt Lake and members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, perhaps, and then we have Judah, the Jews, and Jerusalem, and they're. So, so, so this revelation is, is, uh, is fitting for both. So we can't ignore that because it says so in verse one in the Book of Mormon that this is what he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Yet we have modern day prophets who say this is also about Salt Lake and the Salt Lake Temple. So interesting there. Now, further on, it, it talks about a beautiful time period where men will take their swords and beat them into plowshares. Um, so, so basically you're taking a war instrument that's not needed anymore, and you're using that metal to make farm equipment because we're gonna be peaceful farmers. I love that. Um, I love the earth. I'm not a very good gardener. I don't have patience for weeding, but, but give me a tiller or give me some machinery, a, a little tractor, a little Kubota. I've, I've had one and I love that. I'll do that, okay? But, but that's, um, that's way better than fighting, than fighting. And that's, that's the, the picture that's painted in Isaiah chapter two. And I'm sure Nephi found such great comfort. Think of this. So, so we just had Jeremiah at the time of, and we know that he had some of the words of Jeremiah, but we don't know if he had all. I'm talking about Nephi, but he had all the words of Isaiah. And, and I, I feel like Nephi's actually a little homesick for Jerusalem. And so the words of Isaiah are not only comforting to him as far as the promise of the Messiah, the blessings of, of, of Israel that, that are far reaching, that they're gonna, they're, they're, the blessings of Israel for those in the old world are still gonna be tied to those people in the new world. That's a blessing, but I also think he likes how Isaiah talks, and I think he likes to hear the words of the places, and I bet when he's writing it, he can smell the smells, he can see the sights, he can feel. It's, it's like, it's, it's his prophet. Um, I don't know how you felt, but um, some of you went on missions as youngsters, and uh, I, I, when, when I was called, it was, um, Spencer W. Kimball, and he's the one that signed my, my little card. And so I love him. I love President Kimball. And, and I feel a connection to him. And when he had the, the throat cancer, whatever caused that, his voice to change. And, oh, you know, he, he, was, he was my man. <laughs> and, and I think that's, that's how I feel like Nephi is with, with Isaiah. Um, anyway, now here's, here's the thing that, that I, I think is interesting because the next chapter is really tied to this. And it's, again, it's Judah and Jerusalem, but it's more of the negative thing. And I think we could, just as we do chapter 12, apply it to, to nowadays, because it is the latter days, it says the latter days, but it also, um, we have, we have really good, and I'll let you look up all the sources of individuals who said that's Salt Lake and that's the Salt Lake Temple. That's when Brigham Young led them into the valley and they built the temple in the mountains, okay? But if you go to chapter 13, the heading says, Judah and Jerusalem shall be punished for their disobedience. So if, if we're gonna liken chapter two to Salt Lake, then we really need to liken chapter three as well as a potential of what could happen to us, what happened to the 
the, 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 the children of Israel? Yeah. So instead of looking at the, the Jewish folks and, and, and reading chapter 13, and I'll let you read it um, of, of 2 Nephi, but instead of going, oh boy, those people, they're so bad. They're so bad. I'm so glad we're not like the, the children of Israel. Let's be careful. Let's be careful. That chapter could be very well be talking about us as a people. Now, look, I don't want to end on a negative note, but I think we have to take the good with the bad. <laughs> if there are promises to Israel that keeps their covenants that are wonderful and a, just a great blessing, there's also what happens if we don't. That's chapter 13. Read it. Read it. And it's, it's, it's likened to Isaiah 3. Now, look, I love you all. You're amazing. I know I've left out some, some other YouTube guys that do just wonderful jobs. I, I watch what I can. I'm like you. Um, there's a lot going on, and we, we do the best we can. But never, never, never has there been a more important time, and our prophet has said this, than now to live by the Holy Ghost and, and, and really uh, define that wheat from the tares and, and be able to discern and, and find com a, a community of, of individuals that are like-minded and that doesn't mean you shun people and, and elevate yourself. It means just the opposite. But at least we can identify and know. And I, I think that's where we're at. We are at the end of Jacob chapter 5. One last time, one last time, one last time. The Lord and his servants go into the vineyard. And, and then the harvest. And the harvest. And the wheat is placed in the garners. The garners are the temples. That's where we're preserved to the Lord through the covenants, through these ancient covenants. That's what President Nelson called them. He goes, these ancient, the ancient ritual, the ancient covenants that they're in the temple. And that's what we get to participate in. God bless you. I love you all. I hope this is, is, is helpful. Uh, and, and what I put out is, is helpful, but I promise you, I learned so much from all of you. Your suggestions, your comments, um, um, are just amazing. Sue and I love you all, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.